Robert says, I own 200 shares of CVX at a cost basis of 114. Do you have a solution for me? CVX at 114. Let's take a look. 200 shares. Yes, I do. All right. So, Robert, if you get a chance um, later on after this presentation, we'll go through it a little bit, but you might want to see other ideas. Head on over to the webinars page. PowerOp.com slash webinars.asp. Go into the options concepts section. Let's scroll down here. And there's a webinar on manage your pro broken position. Alternatives for managing a stock position that has fallen in price, a covered call position that has moved against you, managing a sold put that is now in the money and more. Okay, I'm sorry. So that's from 120 2016 manage a broken position. One of the features you'll see in that webinar is using the stock repair tool. So let's just see where we are. We have CVX. Click on stock repair. All we have to do is put in our cost basis and our number of shares. Stock is at 85.23. What the system attempted to do was build potential ratio spreads. And there's credit and debit spreads and it couldn't find any in this case. So an alternative might be, in this case, Robert, you might want to consider averaging down. I, I know it's bad to throw more good money after bad, but to help repair the position, oops, sorry about that, folks, to help repair the position, if you get a lower cost basis by averaging down first, so let's say you've got your 200 at 114, and then you add another 100 shares at 85.23, you now have 300 shares with a cost basis I see of 104. Okay, that's just another 100 shares. So now I have 300 at 104.40. Now let me try it again. It's probably not going to be there either, but there's hope. Okay, there's still nothing there. So now if you did 200 shares, I know it's putting a large block of change back into the position, but you might have to average down in order to use the ratio repair. Otherwise, what you may be doing is just selling at or out of the money short-term calls against it, but protecting, having to watch it constantly, Robert, in that case. Let, let's just see what would happen here. Um, so if I did, let's just say 8,500. If I added another 200 shares at 85.20 or $85, your average cost per share for the 400 would drop down to 99.50. Now you'd have 400 shares, okay? So you averaged down, bought 200 more shares at about 85, and there's one, but it's, it's not bad. It's out to December 2020, and it's an 85 and 92 and a half. What does that mean? Let's take a look. So it's showing you that if you did average down the 400 shares, you'd have a new cost basis on CVX of... $39,800 invested, average price of $99.50 per share. That'd be a loss of $5,708 after averaging down. Now, we talked earlier about a ratio call spread for Octavio, a little bit more different. But in this case, what we're doing is a ratio call spread of buying four calls at 85 for price of 835. That's for the December 2020 expiration. This would be a cost of $3,300. We're going to fund that by selling eight calls of the 9250 strike for December 2020 at around 455. That's going to bring in $3,600. Buying four and selling eight is a ratio spread, Robert, where four of those calls would be naked, but you own 400 shares of stock. So what you have now is a covered call with an average cost basis of $99.50, selling a 92 and a half call, combined with a bull call debit spread at the 85 strike and the 92.50 strike, a seven and a half point spread, that you received a credit of $300. And now your break even is at $91.88. Okay, how is that possible? Well, you still had a cost base of 114, you average down to have a cost basis of $99.50. We get a 75 cent roughly net credit. It's $300 for the four shares. We get 75 cents of net credit. If the stock's trading at 91.88 at expiration, the 92.50 calls expire worthless. The 85 call 
is $6.88 in the money. And yes, you've got $99.50 here. $99.50 cost base and the stock's at 99, you're still down 762. But at this point, you could sell to close the stock, sell to close that long call for 688, you took in a credit of 75 cents, this covers the loss at 762 per share, you're now at break even with a cost, of the stock just at 91.88. Of course, you could still see a small max return of 125 if the stock's above 92.50. Now, it's great to see it numerically, but if you click on Analyze Trade, that'll take us to our profit and loss chart on the position. Oh, sorry. And here we see we have 400 long shares, selling eight against it and buying four other ones. That completes the bull call debit spread with the covered call, break even at 91.87, max return of 1.3 at 92.50. So what, about $22 below your cost basis of 114? Okay, and still actually uh, seven points below the new adjusted cost basis of 99.50 as well. Okay, so Robert says, all right, this is, this is an IRA, not sure I can sell naked calls. Okay, but remember, if you can do spreads, this isn't, nothing here is naked. Four of these, are linked to the covered call. The other four are linked to the long call as a bull call debit spread. So if you're allowed to trade credit or debit spreads in your IRA, you can do this. What you would do is just sell four December 9250 calls against your stock. It's a covered call. Enter a bull call debit spread of buying four and selling four against it. Okay. Now you've got eight sold calls, but you've got an entry in your broker as a bull call debit spread and a covered call position which should be available on level two, maybe level three, depending on your broker as well. Okay, so Robert, that's one thing that you could consider as well. Okay, and that's something that I, I normally would do. I mean, and it's possible, and I think it's discussed in that webinar as well. So let me, let me go on this for a couple of seconds. I'm just going to skip over the other comment here on it real quick. And Robert, you said what you did is sell 79 puts and collected $1 a share to lower cost and thought if I got called, I'm averaging down. And that's good too. Um, but eventually in that case, you know, you're putting up the extra cash, almost like buying it directly. So if it keeps falling, you still might have it, but you can still sell puts against it. You're just putting up the extra capital. This is an idea, Robert. And we had to go through a little bit of a hoop to get you to the point where we could actually find a repair. I might not use this repair or average down to try to find this repair. December might be too far away from me. That webinar I mentioned is going to discuss other things, such as maybe doing a covered combination similar to what you did with the naked put and more. Um, and then a comment comes in, and I, I wouldn't really do this necessarily. William said, Michael, for the CVX position, what about averaging down with a long call to keep the capital cost down? For the January, for example, the January 22 long call is possibly $22, and then sell short calls against the position for income, also shorter term. OTM put credits. Okay, you see where this is going. That's way too much, William. I'm sorry. That's way too much involved. What we did is just had the computer analyze for us a potential ratio spread or a cover call and a bull call debit that could cut our cost basis down and get our break even to 91. Now you're talking about putting $22 more into a position for an expiration that's uh, out into January. And then you mentioned selling short-term calls against it, which you'd have to manage because the only calls that are available right now, they're not going to pay for that long call right away. That's not really helping you average down. It's adding costs to the total position, and you're going to be fighting time decay on that long option. Now, I'm selling week by week or every month against it to try to knock the cost basis down of the long call that I paid $22 for, but what else is happening right now? I'm not getting anything on the stock. So I could sell a covered call and then a calendar spread, as you're kind of saying, and I keep doing that. And then you mentioned adding out-of-the-money bull put credit spreads on top of that. That, to me, is way too much. That's way too much to watch. It's way too involved to get a repair. If we can get a repair faster on the position in a different way, maybe not even by averaging down. So I, I just think that's too many working legs in that case. Okay, That's my opinion. I'll, what you have now is you, you have a position that you're going to try to use a covered call where you have to watch the short call because you can't let it go above the strike. Then you're going to add, oh, let's go back. Um, 
Oh, I'm sorry. Let's take this back to square one. Let's be fair. Sands averaging down. <laughs> Go back to the original position for Robert. Okay. And uh, let's see here. So we're talking about now, uh, you said something for $22. So I guess we're in this range, 65 call here for $22. We're going to buy one or two of those. Just say one. All right. Now, what I want to do to generate income with the stock at 85 is I'm going to sell near term. Let's go 14 days. 86, 86.50, 87. Let's go 87.50 right now, just for sake of argument. Give us some upside room. But now I can sell three of these. Why? One of these is a calendar spread. I now on the January 65 call on the position. So I can sell an 87.50 call against it, get that 175. And against your 200 shares, I'm selling two more covered calls. Okay, now that we're not going to be a break even right away. And William's not expecting that. What he's saying is continue to generate close to $500 by selling three calls sort of every 14 days on this position. You know, still have the high max risk there. But we didn't make up much for it because the plan is here. He doesn't want to just do it one week and see the profit. Of course, we're down $34. And William knows that. We're down $30. We're not going to see that in the first week or the first two weeks or the first month. It's a scheduled plan to continue to roll against the position. Okay? Still looks like a standard covered call structure. So eventually, you know, we're taking in 170, we're taking in 500, and we're trying to knock down this cost basis each and every two-week cycle by 500, get it down to 24,000, get it down to 23,500, get it and so forth, to a point where eventually we'll keep seeing this creep up, creep up, creep up, creep up. Hopefully by October or November, we'll be in a position where we might have a positive return. What I can't do, though, yikes, okay. That's confirmed. What I can't do, though, is have these calls open going through 731, because that's where earnings are. And what's the worst thing that could happen? Oh, I'm sorry, folks. There you go. Worst thing I could be is in this position or maybe a little bit higher with only a 4,000 or, yeah, about a 4,000 or 3,900 maximum loss going into earnings with the 87 and a half strike, and this actually goes up to 92. Now, that long call you mentioned, William, is going to be gaining pretty well. But I've got three short calls I've got to take care of that are probably going to cost me, you know, what I say, $94, $95. It's going to cost me $750 to buy back, adding back in a cost basis, negating the last two weeks of premium we took in. That's the risk of doing that. So with knowing oil's coming up, um, in that case, I'm sorry, knowing earnings is coming up. I was reading Sam's comment as I was speaking. Um, you might not want to have those short calls open as well, Okay. Now, uh, and then, of course, on top of all of this, where we've got the one calendar spread and the two covered calls, we've got the three short calls. And as I mentioned, Robert, if you're in an IRA and you're qualified to do the spreads, you have to enter this as selling two calls against the stock first for a covered call, then do the spread. Because your broker, like mine, won't let me do the ratio spread because if I tried to enter three to one spread, they tell me, what are you, an idiot? Two of those are naked. And they say, no, they're covered by the stock. And they say, well, link it to the stock, dummy. I say, okay, I'll link it to the stock, but it's obvious where it was linked to. In any case, do the covered call operation first, then do the extra contract of the spread after. So, um, William, in this case, then if you did the bull put spread, the real risk here, another risk here is if I added the bull put spread to it, okay, I'm going to get maybe 30 or 40 cents of credit to knock the cost basis down a little bit, probably only doing two contracts or maybe three contracts total, whatever it is. But remember, then that's going to increase the monetary requirement. Nothing I have open in my current position, this current repair, attempted repair structure is covering it. So now the monetary requirement goes up, which means if I'm wrong and the stock continues to go down, I haven't addressed anything on the downside. So I could actually increase my losses from where I am right now and increase losses from continuing the stock as the stock falls because I'm losing on the bull put credit spread and the long stock position. Thought from Sam too, Robert, in case you're interested, instead of an oil stock, um, Robert could buy a tech stock with a nice upside potential. Uh, sound fundamentals and positive earnings. He mentions uh, the one we just saw in the bull put credit spread search, TDOC, E-N-Z-M-T-A-L, uh, GDX, some of the positions that Sam's in as well. Tech has been really hot recently, and um, sometimes there is a point. And uh, sometimes there is a... Uh, thought pattern here that maybe it's better to just close the position and take the loss. I, I know it's extreme, 
30 points roughly. Uh, so we're looking at a 25, 26% loss on this position. But is it worth it to continue to stay in the position that's down 25% that you have no clear vision? And I'm not saying you, Robert, specifically, but the way the market is, that I have a clear vision it's going to come back. Oil itself, that whole market is in a weird, twisted place of uh, different countries doing different things to try to make it go up and make it go down and, and kind of go at each other. And, of course, not people aren't using, we're using more gas now, that's for sure, but we're still not at that point where everyone's using as much gas as they were eight months ago, okay? And I know the cruise ships are starting up soon and everything else, and some other things are going on here, uh, for better or for worse. But, again, if we're not certain we're going to see a recovery, Robert, anytime soon, you're not confident in the recovery of this type of stock anytime soon, maybe okay to take the loss and just look for stocks that better match your needs as well. Uh, so Sam says the earnings, he, he just looked up, we were talking, he says the earnings are uh, estimated at minus 17 in the fourth quarter. He says he thinks the stock will take time to go up as well. Yeah, okay, so this, this, is, a this is a good comment from William, and I, I, I see what he's saying. So William's additional thought on this, real last quick thing on this, and then we'll get to the other questions that have been waiting on it. Uh, William does say, so my thoughts on CVX was thinking about two long calls at 65 strike, Okay. And if the stock bottoms, in that case, and rebounds, then the average of the two long call strikes and the 200 shares would be 89, which is close to where the stock is now. I would only do this if I thought the stock could rebound from its recent downturn. Personally, I don't stay long once a position violates the 50-day SMA. Okay. So this is what this position would look like. And let's say the stock did go back up to our $91.88 break even on the saw after averaging down and doing that repair, okay? And let's say that this, uh, oh, sorry, we reached 91.88 around 11.5. What's going on here? Okay, so it goes back up to 91.88. We're still down 4,424 on the stock because we didn't average down in this case. Maybe that would be more fair if I did that. But the long calls only gained $1,000 back. We're still at a loss of 3,000. Now, let's cheat. And it's not cheating, but let's say we average down in this case to the same way I did with the repair, William. And let's say we did four calls in that case to help the average that you mentioned. All right, now we still have got this chart here. But remember, after averaging down and doing the repair for December, let's say the stock hit 90, 88 on or around December expiration, uh, it's the 17th or the 15th, uh, 18th, okay? So that was for our December repair. We're still down $1,000 where we would have been at break even with the repair. Now, you were planning on selling against it. I understand that. You're planning on selling continuously and selling calls. You may have to manage them. But just this repair alone has a flaw in it. And it's not the flaw that the stock moved up another seven points, so your calls did go up. But during that five-month period, in addition to gaining intrinsic, you also lost a lot of time value. Okay, So you'd have to hedge that time value, as you mentioned, by continual selling calls against it. But now you've really got to watch what strike price you're selling those calls because of that. Whereas the repair was simple enough that it just would have got us back to break even at 91.88 at December expiration. If the stock was at 91.88, you know, okay, uh, in that case, uh, William, so this might be a, a, a problem here where now you're going to fight time decay, and you're going to try to fight time decay by selling near term against these January calls, I understand, to create calendars. But again, just that position by itself didn't get us back to break even because you've got to, what you're paying for essentially over the next few months is paying for the time value decay and you're trying to hopefully pay for that and hedge this premium, this loss we've already taken on the position as well. William, there's a, there's a lot of concepts here, and I'm not going to get into it. Um, William just added, if he's long from 114, then he's owned the stock since at least January 2020. So he wrote it down to 52 in March, and the thought there was is that uh, maybe we could have managed it at that point. But it could also be that he had to buy back calls that he sold against it when the stock was moving up and had added to the cost basis before the decline. It, it's no point saying what has happened in the past. We want to look forward to say what's happened now, Robert. We gave him some fantastic ideas of how to manage it, showed some of the graphs. Calendar spread might work really well, William, but it's got to, as just as the repair, it's, it's got to 
stock has got to move back in the direction that you want, right? All right.